Hey everybody, Sandra here from Boho Jewel, and today I want to share with you this crochet stitch that I've been working on this week. A friend of mine is having her baby shower Saturday, and I thought it would be fun to do a couple of little handmade gifts for her. So I'm making these little baby washcloths. And I'm using what's called a moss stitch. You may have also heard of it as the linen stitch or a granite stitch, but it's a really nice beginner crochet project because it really just uses a single crochet and you get these really cute patterns in it. So you get these kind of V-like patterns, which just softens it up. And it's the same on both sides. So both sides look the same. It's a really nice, flexible stitch as well. So it's great for a project like a washcloth or a dishcloth or even a scarf or a sweater or whatever. So it's a really cute pattern and I wanted to share that. The um, cotton that I'm using is, I love this cotton, and it is super, super soft, which is perfect for babies. Um, you can use a uh, rougher cotton if you're making a dishcloth or something like that, but I definitely recommend cotton for anything like washcloths, washcloths or dishcloths, simply because they're easy to, once you're finished using them, throw them in the laundry, get them nice and clean. If you use acrylic, acrylic gets kind of weird as it gets wet, and um, I feel like it ends up developing a strange odor too, so I prefer cotton for anything like this. So since it is a good beginner project, I'm gonna go over a few basics for anybody who might be a super beginner. When you buy your skein of yarn, you'll see in the corner somewhere, they'll share with you um, your knitting needle sizes right here and your cro crochet hook size recommendation. Um, this one is recommending a 5.5 millimeter. Um, I'm actually using a five crochet hook because it's what I had at home and it's actually working out just fine for this. Um, if you use the larger hook, it's just gonna make your stitches a little larger, a little farther apart. So you can make this any size that you want to, um, but the key thing when you're doing your initial chain here is to make sure you're using an even number for your initial chain. So I'm gonna do a chain of 30. Okay, so I'm going to take my yarn and put it over top of my finger right here. And then I'm gonna loop that other one behind. I'm going to pull this up just a little, hook that back one, slip my finger out, and I have my starting knot. So from there, we're going to create a chain. So the way you create a chain, super easy. You take your hook, you wrap it around your yarn, and you pull it through, and you have your first chain loop it around let me get more centered pull it through and you have your chain two three and i'm going to get quiet while i count because numbers are not my strong suit and i don't want to miscount so that's three let's see one two three <laughs> four Okay, so that's 30. And now you'll see, let me show you this real quick. You'll see that that's just a little bit longer than my other one. And the reason for that is um, you wanna decide how big you want your project to be, and then you wanna add four chains to it. Because we're going to actually, our first stitch is going to go into the fourth chain. So then by the time you do that, you're gonna have the size that you want. It'll make sense more, I think, once we get started. So you have your chain. I have this chain of 30 right here. And now I'm going to single crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which means not the chain that's actually still on the hook, but four from there. So we have this one right here, one, two, three, and four. And I'm just gonna push my hook through there, scoop up some yarn, pull it back through, and we have a single crochet. And now I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to single crochet in every other loop. So I'm going to skip this next chain, and I'm going to go into the one next to that pull it through, pull it through, and chain one. So I'm gonna skip, 
pull it through this loop, pull my yarn around, pull it back through, and that's our single crochet. And then I'm going to chain one, I'm going to add another chain by pulling the yarn through. So skip right in here, chain one, our single crochet, chain one. Skip, single crochet, chain one. And we're going to do that all the way down the row to the bottom of your chain, your initial chain, skip and through here, skip. And then once you get to the bottom, you should have a single crochet in the very last loop. And this is one of those things where sometimes I'm not paying as much attention as I should and I get to the end of the chain and realize that I messed up. <laughs> so here's hoping that by talking I didn't mess up. <laughs> but the good thing is you get your first row done and you'll know whether you need to take it apart or not right away. Right here. And you can start over. Okay, perfect. Whoops. Last one likes to hide a little. Okay. So now, so we finish that off and chain one, two. So there we have our nice first row. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to crochet into your chain one spaces. So, not the first loop right here, but you'll kind of see, and it's tricky to see on that first space, but you'll see that little V right there. You want to go in between those. So you're going to crochet into your chain one space. So right here, single crochet, pull it through, chain one. Same thing, next to the space, single crochet, chain one. So as your pattern gets bigger, so we're skipping this one right here, and you can see the little V shape, that's what I kind of look for, into the chain one space, single crochet, and chain one. So as you kind of continue to grow your pattern, you will see it a little easier. I find that that very first chain is a little tricky to see, simply because that first one is a little looser than the rest of them end up being. Whoops. And you do that all the way to the bottom of your chain. So you're crocheting into your spaces, trying to hold on to your yarn. <laughs> there we go. And that is basically the stitch. So here we go. And then again, the last stitch right here is should be your last stitch. So the last space should be where you end up. Go through here. Okay. And chain two. All right, so you have the start of that, and then you're doing the same thing with every row. So you're not going into this very first chain right here. You're going into the space that you created in the row before. Single crochet, chain one. Let me get a little extra yarn. And right here. So now, as it gets a little taller, you'll start seeing your little V-shapes, and you'll see the pattern that it's creating. right in between. And one thing to notice, um, if your yarn is getting looser, you definitely, when you're pushing your crochet hook through the back, you don't want to, let me see, you don't want to end up pushing through the V on the other side. Let me see if I can show you that real clearly. You want to make sure that when you're going between your little V's here, that you're between your V's on the back. So if you're using maybe a looser yarn or a looser stitch, that might become an issue, but for the most part, um, 
I think once you kind of get the feel for it, it's, it goes through pretty easily. And if you're using a good tension, um, it shouldn't be a big problem. And then you just keep repeating that until you get to the length and the width that you want your project to be. So that's basically it, and it's a pretty simple stitch, and it's it makes such a pretty little flexible pattern. So you'll just continue doing that, and you'll continue to build rows all the way up, and you can see the little V patterns going. And once you get it to the size that you want it, your square, whatever size you want, once you have your very last row here, let me take this out to show you. Okay, and you always end up in that last stitch you do your single crochet through, and then you're going to pull a knot through. Oh, let me get a little closer so you can see. And you're just going to continue pulling that through, cut your yarn, and kind of tidy it up. You don't really need a super sharp needle for this. You just need something. I like this one with the dull end in case I poke myself, because <laughs> I tend to get into a zone and I kind of tend to um, let me try to smooth that out a little poke myself and get hurt and we don't like that <laughs> so thread my needle here in theory and I'm just gonna work that in through my finished washcloth just kind of work it underneath a few of your stitches just to tuck it away and hide it give it a little extra security this yarn is so soft, I absolutely love it. I think I'm gonna have to um, go back and get some more and start working on like scarves for fall and winter. And then to trim it, I always like to pull it up just a little tiny bit, give it a little tension and cut it close. Because then when you pull it back, it just disappears in there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and cut that little bit of fray off the end. and just tuck it into your finished pieces there. So if you guys um, use this stitch, let me know what you're using this on, what kind of projects you're using it with, and um, if there are any stitches out there that you'd be curious to try, any kind of crochet techniques, please drop it in the comments because um, I get bored doing the same stuff all the time. So. <laughs> I'm always looking for new things to try and new things to do, so if there's something that you are curious to see, a certain type of crochet technique, I would be happy to research it and give it a try and do a tutorial. But there we have it, so a super cute little baby washcloth, and I'm going to um, keep working on this one as well. Um, I think out of this skein of yarn, I'll probably be able to get three, maybe even four. So I'm going to keep working on it and get it finished up for Saturday. Super excited. So thanks for watching, you guys. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel. And I'll be posting lots more fun, crafty stuff and tips and advice and just my basic life experience. <laughs> so have a great day, guys. Thanks.